it's 2003, and Lego is virtually out of cash. Sales are down 30%, the company is losing $300 million a year, and sitting on a massive $800 million pile of debt. Filing for bankruptcy is a matter of when, not if. And that was until this man entered the fray. Without him, I probably wouldn't be building a man cave of Lego sets ranging from the Taj Mahal to a functional typewriter. And Lego as we know it would not exist. This is the story of Lego's revival, arguably the greatest corporate turnaround in business history. This video is sponsored by Finley. More on them in a minute. This chart says it all. Lego is the top ranking toy brand in the world by a mile. It's bigger than Barbie, Nerf, Hot Wheels, Hasbro, and the creator of Pac-Man combined. But it wasn't always that way. Lego's founding story was incredible foreshadowing for the bumpy journey that the business has been on for the last 90 years. I'm gonna take you on a quick trip to Billund, a quaint town smack dab in the middle of Denmark. This is Olker Christensen, a Danish carpenter and the founder of Lego. I have crazy respect for Olkirk, who founded Lego out of necessity and tragedy. When the US stock market crashed in 1929, it put the entire world into a depression, and Olkirk's carpentry business was absolutely crushed. His primary customers were farmers, and they were hit especially hard by US and UK import restrictions. During the downturn, Christensen was forced to lay off most of his staff, and by 1931, he let his last employee go. Inspired by an advice column in a Danish magazine, Christensen pivoted his business to making wooden toys. His friends and family weren't buying it, point blank asking him, can't you find something more useful to do? If losing your business isn't bad enough, Olkirk then had to mourn the loss of his wife, Kirstine. At this point, he's not only a struggling solo entrepreneur, but he's also a single parent to four children. In 1942, a factory fire nearly killed his business, but thanks to support from his community and an unwavering sense of responsibility to his four kids, Christensen rebuilt his factory bigger and better than ever. On January 28, 1958, Lego filed its first patent for this. It's iconic two by four brick. This little block laid the foundation for three decades of incredible growth. And there's one word to describe why, focus. Lego acknowledged it caught lightning in a bottle and it focused all of its energy on expanding its distribution rather than expanding its product line. Besides launching the OG Legoland in 1968, Lego focused on getting its simple interlocking bricks into the hands of every child around the world. Despite having success during the 60s and much of the 70s, Lego lost its precious patent in 1978. All of a sudden, anyone could start manufacturing the brick, and that is exactly what companies did. By 1984, Tyco Toys began producing very similar bricks to Lego at a fraction of the price, eating away at the US market. So put yourself in Lego shoes. Sales are slowing. Competitors are eating your lunch. You are fighting video games for kids' attention. What do you do? If your answer is to try expanding your products, well, that's exactly what Lego did, and it completely screwed them. The company opened three new Legoland parks in the UK, San Diego, and Germany. The company stopped focusing on the brick and started focusing on digital entertainment, including video games, and it even launched a production company. Lego sets with electronic components were launched, action figures launched, fashion lines, jewelry, baby products. The brand had become diluted and the results were a shit show. By 2003, the company was virtually out of cash. Sales were down 30%. The company was losing $300 million and they were sitting on $800 million of debt. Lego was desperate for a new plan. And in 2001, Jurgen Vignudstorp, a 36-year-old former McKinsey consultant, came to the rescue. His strategy was simple, cut Lego to its core and rebuild brick by brick. He cut thousands of jobs, stopped making unprofitable sets, got rid of video games, and sold off Legoland parks. And thanks to Jurgen's leadership, which has been called in some ways a better model for innovation than Steve Jobs, Lego has never been in a stronger position. Sales hit 64.6 billion Danish krone or 9.3 billion US dollars in 2022, which is 10x 2004 revenue when Lego hit rock bottom. And Lego was named the most powerful brand in 2015, moving ahead of Ferrari. Lego. 
But Newtsdorp didn't just cut the fat. He had a vision and the success that followed can be attributed to these three strategies. First, Lego has done an amazing job of building alongside its customers. In 2014, Lego launched Lego Ideas, a community that allows anyone to submit an idea for a Lego set. And if your idea gets supported by 10,000 people, it will actually be produced by the company. Lego gets to source free ideas from its customers and you get social cred and 1% of net sales of the product. So far, Lego Ideas has attracted 3 million members, 40,000 ideas, and 50 fan sets have actually been produced. Second, Lego has grown the business via product penetration versus portfolio diversification. The 2x4 block remains at the center of its universe and every new offering revolves around the core product. It reminds me of the famous 1957 Walt Disney drawing that basically shows its entire universe, its movies, its merchandise, its music, its parks, all are centered around its core characters. Every spin-off from movies to shows to games is centered around this tiny block and its capacity for inspiring creativity. The 2014 Lego movie made $470 million at the box office and earned a 96% on Rotten Tomatoes. Lego Masters, the Fox competition show, is now in season three. And there are now 904 branded Lego stores around the world. Lego also boosted sales by expanding its audience with the adult market quadrupling over the last decade and introducing 162 sets focused on the 18 plus market. I think I'm personally responsible for 50% of that sales growth. TLDR, find ways to go deeper with your products that work versus trying to prove that you're not a one trick pony. Being a one trick pony can be fine. Look at Google. The third and final lesson, Lego absolutely crushed licensing partnerships. One of Lego's best marketing strategies is latching onto passionate audiences by doing licensing deals with killer game and movie franchises. All you need to do is go to Lego's best sellers on its site and you'll see sets ranging from Bowser to Hogwarts to Optimus Prime to The Office. There's no better way to convert you to trying Lego than doing so in a way that respects your existing passion. Said differently, a proven marketing strategy, no matter what business you're in, is something I like to call the hub and spoke model, whereby you get access to hubs which get you in front of a lot of the right customers. Lego is exceptional at exploiting the strategy through licensing partnerships. From the factory fires during Old Kirk's tenure to the massive debt burden and near bankruptcy almost two decades ago, Lego has had its back against the wall many times in its 90 year history. But thanks to great leaders like Vig Nudstorp and maniacal focus on the customer and the core product that made Lego, Lego, the company is flying higher than ever before. Entrepreneurs know that after end of year starts yet another crucial season, beginning of year. Don't waste time by manually sending out invoices and following up on overdue payments. And definitely don't throw away your hard earned profit on transaction fees. Avoid expensive payment processors and start off 2024 strong with a little help from Finley. Finley is a digital back office platform that helps businesses manage all of the time consuming operations that come with, well, running a business. Automate your business business with Finley. The best part, Finley doesn't break the bank. The annual plan is $397 per year, so you can set it and forget it. And if you don't love it, no problem. If Finley doesn't help you run your business better within 30 days, you will get a full refund. Get started at finley.com slash founders journal. That's F-I-N-L-I dot com slash founders journal.